Hello. This is some work I've done on the um, same instrument. I've done work in the past. It did not address the problem. It, uh, it did work for a while, but um, actually I did work around that problem, but not exact on the problem that causes this instrument to show a hot coolant. Um, I did some uh, research online and I found a, on a forum, on a Pajero forum, a picture of this module. Someone was so nice and so helpful to post uh, the picture of the module and pinpoint it to the part that is acting up. So it saved me a couple of hours of trying to, to trace down where this instrument gauge is connected to. So I would have to use some sort of a ohmmeter, trace the wire, where it goes into this connector, then from that connector where it goes. And um, then probably after an hour of trying, or maybe half an hour, maybe two hours, uh, after trying to uh, locate the circuit that's connected to this instrument gauge, uh, probably I would have to start resolving or reflowing the whole board to make my job faster. I would have to use uh, maybe a heat gun or just uh, manually solder every component on this, uh, on this module. But because this gentleman posted the picture, I thought it was so nice and so easy for me to work on. Uh, but I, since I could not find any videos of how to do that job, uh, I'm posting this video for those who uh, don't have a advanced soldering skill or uh, lots of experience in uh, troubleshooting electronics. So I do work in electronics for uh, probably at least 20 years. And for me, even uh, working on this one is not difficult. But when you have uh, something right in front of you showing you what's the problem, why I need to take the time uh, unless I really want to learn what this uh, CPU or microcontroller is doing, or how it's doing the job. So, but this is beyond my scope. So I could spend my time efficiently learning something else. And um, what I'm trying to show you exactly how I did uh, resoldering on this module. Uh, what I did, I used a uh, silver, it says silver bearing, rosin core, silver uh, solder. So it has, um, has some solder into the compound. Uh, it's an alloy. You can buy it from some hardware store. Why I use this one? Because it has high melting point and high conductivity or a lower impedance. So you use this one. If you want, it's up to you what type of uh, solder you use, but I use it for uh, reliability, so it, this module will last me longer. And as you can see, the solder are larger. And people who have solder skill would say, oh yeah, you guy, you put too much solder on, the, uh, on this resistor. So the reason I did, I put a little bit solder, so you see uh, some solder blobs on each each resistor. The reason I, I use more solder is because I wanted the solder to act as a heat sink. So this larger resistor, probably half a watt uh, surface mount resistors or quarter watt or something like that, uh, they have to dissipate some heat. That's why they are uh, larger here. The manufacturer knew what they were doing. So it must be some high current here. So I'm not uh, trying to dig into how this module is working. Um, I don't have a service manual, I don't have the diagram or schematic for it, but I assume based on the size of this resistor, they, uh, they bear larger current. So I use uh, more solder to act as a heat sink. I did resolder the um, regulator. So I assume this one, uh, it's... Um, 
it's going to allow probably at least one amp to go through uh, probably from 12 volts to 9 I don't really uh, know what type of uh, I, I should look online see uh, what voltages this one provides but it I don't really care what's about I just resoldered it so today I'm uh, just playing dumb and I do some work without much of a thinking and the gentleman I was talking about uh, pinpointed to this RTM resistor so what I did I uh, I touched with a solder iron I touched one side and once the solder molted I pushed it a bit and I noticed the resistor move freely so it, it tells me that there was a crack on this side so how you assume how you do that uh, trick uh, you look at the trace on each side and if you see a bigger size trace a copper trace like a PCB or PC board trace is larger one side uh, that would act as a heatsink so the solder on that side uh, will last longer so the crack is going to occur on the, uh, on the side where the uh, PC board trace is shorter or uh, smaller smaller gauge or something like that uh, so then like I said you use your solder iron on the opposite side and you learn if there is a crack but if you don't have to do that unless you really want to learn something um, you just take this one out, use some uh, flux, I'm using a flux pen, uh, use some flux, use some silver solder, uh, redo the, uh, the solder pads in here, so on both sides, and also this resistor was doing something similar, probably is for the uh, fuel gauge, I have no idea, but this, uh, this seems to go to the... Um, the cooling system uh, gauge or indicator okay so you take these ones are uh, they are one kilo ohm each and you take them out redo the uh, the solder pads the and um, the copper pads and use a tweezer whichever is convenient for you solder on each side and I did the same thing like on the other resistors I put more solder to help dissipating the heat so I assume that this is going to be maybe 50 milliamps current through that instrument uh, gauge uh, or maybe 20 something milliamps but for this size of the resistor 20 30 milliamps it's probably a lot of current so for that size it's going to be a little bit of heat maybe 20 Celsius degrees above the uh, normal uh, room temperature, I mean uh, ambient temperature in a car and when it's hot outside uh, that is not going to help any, anyhow and a little bit of silver solder is going to make this one last way longer and after I resoldered those, I resoldered the diodes, I did the same thing, I used the silver solder to act as a heat sink as you can see here and uh, probably the same thing at the regulator these little things or transistor whatever they are i don't have an idea and i don't want to search for the purpose of these two parts but i just did uh, where i thought this might uh, help this uh, redoing the uh, the solder and dissipating the heat then the, um, i resolder this connector why because i I took this module out probably three times and um, I thought okay give it a solder with a regular solder not uh, silver you can use whatever you want so as you can see I did not use extra solder so I do have uh, solder soldering skills for my years of experience and I resoldered this connector as uh, this connector as well and some other other parts uh, the this surface mount parts I did resolder and after that I've used a, a brush and some isopropyl alcohol um, I cleaned the the flux because I don't want the flux to get into this uh, female connector or, or to this connector then I used the contact cleaner I cleaned this connector these connectors 
then ready to ready to install the module back into this housing and install it back in here so you have to be careful if you haven't watched my previous video you have to be careful that this is the connector for your for your LCD so what you want to do is you want to take this covers out and hold with your two fingers against that LCD module so hold some pressure while you install this module of course after you assemble the uh, this one into the housing so you equally press this module down so this female connector is going nice and straight down into this uh, male connector into this so these pins are not going to bend or bend this uh, this female uh, uh, contacts in here if you feel that uh, there is uh, some resistance then you have to adjust you may want to use a uh, a, a pick or something that uh, it helps you to adjust this uh, these pins so again you have to push against this LCD module sideways not right in the center and uh, press left right left right and adjust the top module making sure this one goes nicely and it fit properly in here you don't see any gaps between this PC board and the module then once everything is connected properly and uh, you feel that there are not no gaps then you can uh, install the screws so don't put the screws and screw the uh, the module using the pressure caused by the screw why because it could uh, damage something so you don't have a control of the uh, pressure on the connectors if you use the screws so the screws and your screwdriver and especially if you use a, a large screwdriver it's going to act like a torque amplifier so you don't really know exactly how much pressure you put on the screws right and you will damage this uh, uh, this plastic in here or in here you don't want to do that because you would have to redo that using some sort of a plastic epoxy and I hope my uh, advice is going to help you avoid this type of troubles and I had to replace some lamps in here and because the, my truck is a three-door truck these two bulbs that are uh, also being used for the four-door model uh, are not being used so this would be three-door model the last two bulbs were useless but since this manufacturer sold Mitsubishi the panel for both type of cars uh, they uh, I think I, I think it was cheaper to ship this clusters or instrument panels equipped like for both type of cars for four doors and for three doors and so I just use these two bulbs as pair for my uh, uh, one that was burned right here the uh, four-wheel drive one was one bulb was burned out and another one somewhere maybe one door rear door or something like that uh, for some reason burned out yeah so uh, some tricks for you to make your job faster and uh, I'm thankful to the gentleman like I said in the posting on the forum about this resistor and uh, I hope that my video is going to help other Pajero owners to enjoy this beautiful car thank you bye bye